so that would have been a lot more impressive if the last guy hadn't been so interesting. I reckon he was going to be really dull and have to break his up, but he wasn't. He was really interesting. Yeah. However, what has Jim May got to do with WordPress? So most drums have a skin and a shell, and that skin is attached to the shell with like nails or something. And most drums sound like, and that's the only thing you can do. And if you want to get a big funky beat, you have to get a load of drums together. So that's why you see a drum kit on stage, because you needed to have loads of drums. So at some point in the Malinese Empire, a good 600 years ago, a blacksmith saw this problem and said to the drummer, I know how to keep your drum really tight. We're going to weld up some metal rings and put them around. And then we'll attach the metal rings to the drum and it'll sound great. And it kind of worked. But then a weaver came along and said, I know how you can tune those drums. So that that one over there sounds bassy. And this one over here sounds nice and high. So the weaver added in his nice, what we call the Mali weave. And that allows us to tune the djembe. What has this got to do with WordPress? There was a creative, he wasn't caring about joinery or carpentry, he just wanted to make some music. So he got a bit of wood and he hauled it out, he stuck a skin on it, and it allowed him to make some music. Then somebody else in his community with a completely different skill set, the blacksmith, he came along and he added his technology to what the musician had already done. And things got a little bit better. And then somebody else in the community with a completely different skill set came along and added in his weave. And all of a sudden the music got really good. And that's what this has to do with WordPress. WordPress is not a blog platform. It is not a piece of software. WordPress is a community made up of all of us. We all every day make it that wee bit better. Even if it's only by visiting a WordPress website or logging into a WordPress website, we're all part of the community. And the bigger and the stronger that community gets, the more resources go into that community to make it bigger and stronger. To the point now where WordPress, as we've seen time and time again today, dominates the internet as the platform of choice for people to use. What I want to talk about today, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, because I'm standing in front of the mic. What I want to talk about today is not so much the technical solutions and the bits of code and the short codes that we use, and I use an awful lot of my day-to-day -day work, and I'll show you the output of some of that. What I want to talk about is how we, as members of this community, can use our skills to create really functional websites, websites that really dramatically impact our clients. Most of my work is to do with small to medium businesses, small businesses who know they need a website, but that's about it. They don't really even think too much about what they're going to use that website for. And I come along and I sort of listen to them and talk to them about their marketing plans and realize that the best thing for these people to do is to tell their brand story as strongly as possible using their website. And websites, that's what they're for, but it's not always that easy to do that. For example, a builder, he's out on site, he's just made a beautiful house. He wants to whip out his phone and say, kitchen, picture, sitting room, picture, really interesting feature in the ceiling, picture, and upload that to his blog. He doesn't want to have to log into a website and then go and navigate the page and hit add new and add a title and look for the featured image. He's a builder, he's building houses. Because he doesn't want to do that stuff in the interface doesn't mean he shouldn't have a functional website that's telling his brand story. It's just my fault. I haven't been able to give him a really good interface that fits in with his working day. If I give him a simple form that sits on his mobile phone that on site he can fill in and say, Bobby's house, picture one, picture two, picture three, and then that goes off and fills a template like Bill showed us, then we've got something that's really powerful. My builder's running around the place, he's building houses, he's building a house a week, and at the end of the year, he's got 52 case studies on his website, compared to the other guy who has to log in and click page add new, never does it, and therefore has no case studies on his website. So if we think a little bit more outside the box about what we can do with WordPress, we acknowledge the fact that it's hugely powerful and virtually every business problem has already been solved on the platform and we think outside of the box and we listen to our clients' problems, we can start to do really powerful things very easily. So I'm going to run you through some real world examples of where I've taken the stuff Bill showed me about how you build up a theme, talked about custom fields and how you can add in certain extraneous pieces of information to the site. I'm going to show you how we can then build upon that to deliver business solutions. 
So the first one you're seeing at the minute is a slideshow of images from Donegal. And that's a little personal passion project of mine. I'm an amateur photographer. I'm not a very good one, but I like my work. So I had all these cool images of Donegal and I needed to organize them in a way that I could find my way around them. So using the tools I've now learned, I was able to very quickly build myself for myself a little themed up website where I was able to say I was here and there's the photos for it. And then all of a sudden, just by me uploading the photos, I was getting this cool website that was bringing it all together. And then one day, sitting having a cup of tea, I was doing a bit of cooking in the kitchen, my workstation's in the kitchen too. I thought, I'd love to be able to see all of the slides about all of the main beautiful images, my favorite images, in a slideshow. So using the tool I've been using, that was really easy. Click, click, bish, bash. I had a little short code that grabbed all of my featured images and bashed them into the slideshow. And that's what you guys are watching now, okay? So we'll get away from Donegal. Mm -hmm. So to dive in at the deep end, here is my flagship site. This was a client I work with who provide home care solutions. So they're sending people out into your granny and grandma's home to provide all sorts of domiciliary care. They have a huge remote distributed workforce. So the guys are in their cars calling around all sorts of different regional areas. Somebody phones into the main office and says, don't go and see Miss Sally because she's sick, she's in hospital. All of a sudden there's now a cascade of phone calls to try and reach the people who are going out to see Miss Sally to get them diverted. <coughs> When I came into the company, that was their main problem was communications. There was a couple of mobile phones, they were always backed up, people were trying to text, texts were getting lost, etc. So the first thing I was able to do was go and ask the WordPress community, how do you get people to talk to each other in a nice private format? I started off with the P2 thing. Hands up, have you ever used the P2 thing? Okay, yeah. So the P2 thing was an internal to automatic, the company behind WordPress built to facilitate team chats. So we used P2 and it worked for a while and then we need something more. So we went into using BodyPress. Hands up, you use BodyPress? Okay, cool, so a lot more hands that time around. So BodyPress is like a private Facebook. It's a WordPress built Facebook engine. It provides a way that you can log into the site, you can put up a quick status update and you can log back out and then everybody can see that status update and start commenting on it and adding pictures. We know what that's like for Facebook. For a business, with remote workers, people out in the field, so they're not in the office, it was transformational. All of a sudden, people could get in contact with each other. Communications weren't just one way anymore, they were very symmetric. One person said something, everybody who needed to was able to hear it, etc. So that employer, that business owner I was working with, got really excited by what WordPress could do for his business. And he still, to this day, tortures me with, can it do? Now that's fantastic because as a web developer, that guy is recurring revenue for me. And in any business, recurring revenue is the real mana. For web developers, we typically build a site and we add, you know, we ask for whatever it is we're going to ask for that site. We go in away, we build it for however long it takes, we get a big check, yoo-hoo! And then we're back into the boom bust cycle, trying to find fresh work, trying to find another website to go and build. If you've got a client who's coming to you every month saying, I want to do something else, and you know that that client's coming to you for that, well then you've got bankable recurring revenue. And for me, as a small business owner, as a dad, it's been completely transformational to know that every month there's a wee bit coming in because I've got these guys addicted to redeveloping their websites on a continual basis. So this is, like I say, this is the real combination. This is the biggest, most complex thing I've built to date, okay? And this is an HR platform, so for this company, Staff can log in, they can send messages all around each other, they can file mileage expense reports, they can send direct reports to each other, they can report on each other in a completely anonymous whistleblowing fashion. Supervisors can go out into the field and bring up a form that runs them through exactly how they do a nice compliant supervision. It fires that back out to the right guys in management. It does all these wonderful, great things, but it's been built up a piece at a time. So HR records, view current and add new, that was a module that we built one month. Spot checks, add annual document check, that's you know, checking driver's licenses are up to date, checking insurance, etc. That was another month. Rotas, mileages, etc. Each one of these modules was not built because of a huge spec the client had given me. The client could never have written this spec because they didn't know all the problems they had until they really got down to the nitty gritty of it. But working with the client, asking their problems, finding out the pain points, and then knowing that I, as a non-PHP gifted developer, could lean on the tools and lean on the WordPress community to deliver a solution, I was confident enough to say, yeah, we can fix it, we can fix that, don't worry. Whew, 
How many sleepless nights has caused me? But anyway. In Northern Ireland, we've got a bit of a problem with two sides of the community, you might have heard. And that poses a particular problem for a lot of businesses here. They want to recruit people like any business. We go to WordPress land and we say, I need a job application plugin, I need a recruitment plugin, and there's a whole plethora, but not one of them is built to ask, are you a Protestant or a Catholic? And in Northern Ireland, we have to ask that question to have a nice, equitable, equal rights and equal opportunities based recruitment process. So this client said, Dave, can you build me a recruitment form? I've got two staff here all day who just cut and paste and photocopy application forms. I said, yeah, sure, not a problem. Build them a solution, hand them a solution. He said, it doesn't find out for Catholic or Protestant day, it's no use. So that was me going, oh, well, I've charged them already for this. I need to come up with a solution. And that was one of the number of things that led me to buy to figure out how I could build a custom framework of forms and easy ways for customers to add data and then pull that data out in an interesting way. So we created a, a Northern Irish compliant recruitment process and it's become really handy and it's become something that, again, is more and more recurring revenue for me. So first of all, they wanted application forms to get the essential data. Then they wanted an automatic reference check. So when somebody fills in the form, the platform goes off and asks the referees for the reference. They're not having to get somebody chased up in the office. Again, over here, and this is complete, over this paid for last Christmas. Service users, service user records, view current, map and ad. We built them a database so that they could have a centralized place for all of the information on all of their service users and all of their needs. Much more importantly, all of the interactions their staff have with those service users. So at any point in time, we can go back to say, what happened? Somebody put a sticky plaster on wrong. It was Sally, it was John, it was Jimmy, and it was a such and such plaster. And actually, they filled in the form to say they put the plaster on correctly. Are you sure you've got your information right? So this sort of a platform, like I say, this is really complex. This is a way far down the line. But this is what you can get to when you've got knowledge like bills and you understand how WordPress does things and how simple it can really make things. And then you're able to use other plugins like Advanced Custom Fields or the one I'm talking about, Toolset, to then really take things out. So, Custom fields, anybody who's in the last talk saw custom fields, it's part of the WordPress editor where we can add in specific metadata or bits of information that are pertinent to the page but they shouldn't go in the main content block. And then we can use PHP or the themes to call that metadata in certain places. Now, the WordPress editor is awesome. It's about to get an awful lot better with the Gutenberg development. However, I still find users struggling with it. They just see an interface and that is enough for them to go, ooh, I need to be a techie to do this. So one of the things I like about the platform I use Toolset is it makes creating front-end um, content entry forms extremely simple. What do I mean? I mean this. I have a client who sells cars. Uh, in the UK, there's a whole load of indigenous sort of car sales websites that people go to. This guy was paid in a fortune and he wants to know if he did his own thing and advertised it through Facebook, could he save money to go off the big guys? So he's a car mechanic, so he's a technical fella, but he didn't want to go near the interface. So we built him this, add new car, and this is a form where he can enter in all the details needed to create this. So I'm not a designer either, and this site didn't get a graphic design treatment, so don't judge it on the design. But more of a fact that my mechanic, the car sales guy, has a wee app on his phone, that when he gets a car into the yard, he takes the pictures on his phone, he adds in the details, he hits upload, and it's on his website. It's a way off to Facebook. He doesn't have to think about anything. He's not logging into WordPress. He's not editing a website. He's not editing pages. He's just filling in his wee form to get the car up there, and then he's getting on with his work. And leaning back to my example about the builder, any small to medium business needs to be doing content marketing. They need to be telling their customers what they do for a living. They need to be showing them examples. And like I say, as, as WordPress developers, the easier we can make that, the more business they will do, the better the community becomes. So again, we can see that this form it created the vehicle sales page. It also created the listing. Because of the wonders of PHP templates, we can now start to pull this thing out. Another thing I like about Toolset is it gives you the option. You can, if you're gifted enough and you can lean into the template files, it'll give you all the functions in the world to go and call all your custom stuff. If you're not that way inclined, it gives you a really nice, friendly graphic user interface where you can say, over in this piece of the page, I want this thing to happen, and over that bit of the page, I want this thing to happen. 
So that's talking about really complex examples where we build up an HR platform for uh, uh, a really busy business with an awful lot of staff there. We can see their, their entire uh, staff contact database or you can't see it because of privacy reasons of putting the opacity filter in there. But on a more simple note, thinking about what WordPress does out of the box before we start to customize it. I see an awful lot of sites where I'm called in to go and fix problems and I go in and there's a plugin stack of like 100 plugins and that's not a bad thing as long as you're all doing something important. When I get in there I often find that there's 20 plugins all doing something that is a core WordPress feature and users don't get this but plugin offers and theme offers etc. Make money by selling plugins. It doesn't matter if it's needed or superfluous, they're going to make money by selling it because you'll find it easier in the plugins than you might find it by looking into Codex or whatever. So thinking about what WordPress does out of the box, two years ago I decided to completely turn my business around from being a service business to a product based business. So instead of me being a web developer and I worked with you and we did all these cool things, I just wanted to sell you a website. What website do you need? And I wanted to get a really clean, streamlined way to figure out and show the client what sort of website it was they needed. Because it had a problem managing expectations with clients, I wanted them to know exactly what they were buying from me, and more importantly, exactly what they were not buying from me. So thinking about how WordPress solves business problems, I said, Dave, is there not a way you can do this for yourself, your web developer? Will the platform not sell your web products? So, yeah, of course it will. So, I rebuilt my website. Does anybody recognize the, the theme? Hands up if you recognize the theme. I'm feeling really good because you see the amount of websites I have built using 2017, I almost feel ashamed, but it's such a good theme, I don't. Mm -hmm. So, I took the, this is the stock WordPress theme. This is 2017, whenever you install WordPress for the first time, this is the theme that's included. One of my ethoses with business is trying to do the most with the least that you have. And obviously when it comes to my own business, I want to spend as little. So there's no point going looking for a really fancy theme or writing a really fancy theme if the one in the box is perfect and it is for my needs. So then thinking about how I can use WordPress and the tools in the box, etc. and plugins to solve my problems, I realized that WooCommerce was the way for me to go. So let me see if we get past the portfolio. And here we have WooCommerce kicking in. So ignore the prices, they're what I value my work at. But you can see here that for any of us, if you're a web developer, hands up if you're a web developer, if that's your business. All right, okay, great stuff. So within that, you can see for me, I come from a marketing and sales background. That's what I did all my days until I got fed up, explained it to marketing people that it wasn't difficult. You just move over, let me fix it. So that's how I ended up getting into development. But I thought that when it came to my business, I'd be amazing at selling it because I was amazing at selling everybody else's business. It turns out when it was my business, I was terrible at selling it because all of a sudden I couldn't sell your bullshit anymore. It was me and I, I don't like to work with bullshit, sorry. So that's where I really started to fall down. And when I was having sales conversations with clients, I was over explaining massively because I'm really passionate about the project, I'm passionate about technology. And talking to the client, I got really fired up about what I was going to be able to do for them. The client's just noise, noise, noise after a point, you know what I mean? So, using WooCommerce, I was able to get all my products onto my website, set a price point that's nice and clear and apparent for everybody. But it also did something really cool. I'm talking to a business and they are a hotel, a restaurant, a joiner's or there's somebody trying to put on a word camp. On my website, I already have that solution bundled up. I'm not looking at you trying to figure out what you're worth, what my website's going to be worth, what plugins I'm going to have to put into it, what all that costs. I really have figured that out because I've figured out what the main genres of the website are. And this applies to any service-based business. Yes, we provide our services in a custom way, but they tend to fall in the same categories. So for this, I was able to show my clients, here we have the web page. Here's all the things that are in this particular box and what you're getting for the price. And like I say, what you're not getting is very clear. Whenever I'm going to meet the client, I hit Control P on the page of my website, and there I've got the sales collateral in my hand to show them and give them a nice collateral handoff. Whenever it comes time for that order to get closed, I'm not having to remember to send them a proposal, and then a quote, and then to chase that quote up, and then to want to ask their accounts, details, their accounts department for the details. I say, brilliant, do you want to go for that? Here's the link, fill in the form. The customer goes, yes, I need that, I don't need that. 
That reinforces for them exactly what they're buying. They then come through the normal WooCommerce checkout, and I get all the information I need to run my accounting. I get their company details, I get their contact details, and most importantly, I get their billing details. Something that's really changed my business here, and I didn't think about it until I was literally putting the checkout page together, was putting in a credit card option. So sometimes I have to wait seven days for people to pay me, but I love it when I get that notification going, I have sent your proposal, they've paid already. It's amazing, it's brilliant. But I didn't think about that until I put this together. So for my business, it's been the sales process has been completely transformed just by lifting a simple tool, WooCommerce, out of the WordPress box and configuring it for my business. When I go to a sales meeting, I know exactly what I'm going to say, I know exactly what I'm going to hand them, it's all there, I know exactly what the price is, and I know that the after sales, the bit I'm pretty terrible at, is also all automatically taken care of for me. So the customer gets nice branded invoices, nice branded proposals, a complete worksheet of what's happening, all nice and done automatically. So I've just got my 10 minute warning, and I just want to sort of recap there that what you can use, various different plugins like Jetpack, like WooCommerce, like Toolset Types, etc. to do is lift your current skill set way, way, way above where you may think it is currently. Two, three years ago, I would never, ever have thought I could do these sorts of things. The only reason why I think I can do these things now is experience of the WordPress community. I know if I get stuck, I will find an answer to my question. I can walk into any client meeting and look my client in the eye and say, we will do that. And I've yet to let them down. I've had to go back to them a few times and say, it's going to take longer, it might cost a little bit more, but I've always been able to deliver. And for me, that's a very powerful thing. Very powerful <coughs> thing. So, this is supposed to be a bit more of a workshop, like I said, just got my, my 10 minute warning. <coughs> we can use this as like questions time. Can anybody throw me a business problem that they've seen recently? cured recently or can think of that they haven't been able to cure that I might be able to cure using my knowledge of plugins and the platform and what I can, what I can do. So whenever you're selling, let's say, what's, what's the main problem you have when you're selling? Are you really good at staying on top of the client, at getting out the information? Are you really good at asking them to consistently write questions to specify the project? Or is anybody using a third party to handle invoicing? Or do you do your invoice manually? Hands up if you do your invoice manually. Okay, so up until a couple of years ago, I did my invoicing in Photoshop. It was really beautiful. It was, it was an awesome looking invoice. I mean, you saw my invoice, you're like, woo, he's the money. Um, but it was a pain in the arse, obviously. It was one of those things whenever I was really busy, I need to get that invoice out the door. And yes, I need the bloody money. But because it was a chore, it got put off and put off and put off. So I then found an app called Wave Apps. Oh, yeah. Wave Apps, <laughs> awesome tool, brilliant tool. Wave Apps is like, yeah, tell me your customer, tell me your products, I'll deal with it for you. Mm -hmm. And it does all nice branded paperwork for you. And that did me for a while. And then using WooCommerce and customizing the WooCommerce emails, I'm now doing all that sort of stuff myself. But it's all branded, it's all happening automatically, and it's all nice, you know. Something else I'm about to start looking into is subscriptions. So I talked about recurring revenue. Those of you who said your business is web development, put your hands up please again. And put your hand down if you're not getting recurring revenue. Other than mostly. <laughs> okay, okay, so a few hands dropped there. So the recurring revenue, like I say, was something that I found was really transformative for me. First of all, when I understood what hosting was, money for old rope. Um, I was able then to, first of all, set up a nice recurring revenue for my business by getting a really decent WordPress hosting environment for my customers, which they weren't getting anywhere else. But then on top of that, like I say, being able to get your clients into the idea that no matter what problem they give you, you will be able to fix it. And integrating yourself in their business problem solving toolkit. So when they've got a business problem, they've got somebody sitting for two hours cutting and pasting something, or they've got a job that they know the team aren't doing right, they're not doing consistently or something. That's a time where you can step in and say, consistently, I can get them the right instructions at the right time. I can get the right information to the right people at the right time. Is that happening right away throughout your business? And I assure you, most of the business people you talk to will say, no. The wrong information gets to the right people. The wrong information gets to the, you know, at the right time. But vice versa, it rarely happens in the right way. So that's where you use the solution developer, the business problem solver can step in. Don't talk about tool set. Don't talk about advanced custom fields. Talk about what problems have you got, what pain have you got right now, and what can I do to automate that, to fix it for you, to get it consistently done every time in the right way. 
So how am I doing for time now? You're okay. Mm -hmm. You're okay. 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 Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned. So are you looking questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, okay. um, you mentioned that your uh, car uh, site was firing out uh, updating the form updates to the website, obviously, and it also updated the Facebook. What's your weapon of choice for um, social for like social automated updating? Okay, so this is something that might split the room. I love Jetpack. Jetpack out of the box does so many things for me that so many other things want to do for me, and maybe sometimes they do it better, and other times they don't. For me, I installed Jetpack Power Course along with WordFence as a security measure. I installed Jetpack as an analytics measure. So I'm qualified in Google Analytics. I love Google Analytics. I used to use it flat out. I got so tired and fed up of installing Google Analytics, writing analytics reports to hand them to somebody who couldn't afford to do anything with it. This analytics report says your landing page is horrible and needs rebuilt. I spent five grand on that landing page. Well, you need a new one. Don't have another five grand. What was the point of me right now with this report in the first place? Do you know what I mean? So most users have heard of Google Analytics, but they're never going to use it properly unless they are, like I say, a company with a decent development team, a decent content marketing team, and they're going to be able to make changes that you're suggesting with the analytics. So nine times out of ten, I'm installing Jetpack for the analytics package for its um, brute force protection. It's got some other things in there that kind of work sometimes, maybe they don't work other times. The testimonials feature can be really helpful. Projects can be really helpful. The content delivery thing always lets me down. I don't know if that's just me, um, but uh, that's just me, maybe. Um, so Jetpack for me is, is a really good plugin to stick in. Um, so it sorts out a lot of those sort of issues. That's cool. Has anybody else any other questions? Um, whenever you are um discussing the features that a website would have with your clients, you're sort of saying there that you have a form or a way that they can select what they want and what they don't want. Is that done through WooCommerce? Because that's the bit I find difficult to you know, say, I want that and then mm -hmm. I want that. But then maybe you haven't priced for that and said it afterwards. So, and if they could just say it yeah. and buy it. It would be 100%. Really so, so this is where WooCommerce is really helpful for me. So I've got a whole load of templated products for events site, hotel site, etc. However, a lot of the time it's a custom job. The client wants that, but maybe another premium plugin. So how do I stick that extra 150 quid in? It's easy. I copy the product. I call it Billy Jobs product. I update the price. I add in the option and I drop down for it. So then let's say it's, it's one of those options the client's mental about. You know it's superfluous. You know it's loads of work and it's expensive and it's expensive the client doesn't need. You can put a drop down in for that just to reinforce it for the client. You know, this isn't necessary. But if you want to drop this voice, go ahead, go ahead, it'll make my day. You know what I mean? So that's the way you can introduce that. But there's a conversation before I put them onto the website. And that's where I do the sort of needs analysis bit. And there is a really cool tool called the post-it note. And I love to post it note for getting a really good spitball in session with the client. What features do you want on your website? Do you want them to be able to log in? Post it note. Do you want them to be able to see a blog? Post it note. What else? Well, we want them to be able to see their fitness charts. We want them to be able to see how much stuff they bought off us. And if you use post it notes for that, it's really handy. Send the client's like, oh, give me that. And then they start writing features and putting them on the wall. And of course, you're looking at that going 200 quid, 500. Point. Where's the rest of the post-it notes here? That's, there you go. <laughs> We're not going to run out of post-it notes today. And then that again allows me to go and say, okay, that's an event site. But it's got all these funky things that the client asked for. There's the screenshot that I took them with my camera of all the post-it notes. So then I'm able to then add that into the item. So then again, when the clients come along, they hit my website, they're saying customized product. They'll maybe stick some client brands in there. Ooh, they love that. They get to that page, they say it's customized product for them. There's all the things I need. There's that guy, he sat with me for 90 minutes. He asked me every question under the sun. He knows my business inside and out. Yep, 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 yep. Bang. He takes credit card. Ha <laughs> ha. Happy day. So that closes it. And again, that's where the last mile in sales is always the hardest part. Asking for the close and asking for the sale. This makes it really easy. So I'll just send you across the link. It's an assumptive close. I'm just assuming you're going to order from it. You get the link. If you don't click on that link, my heart's not breaking. I'm going to give you one phone call to say, did you get that okay? Yes, I did, but that's grand, bye -bye. Or, right, I'll tell you what, well, sure, if you're still humming in hand in six months, that link will still be live, but I'm going to hide it for an hour or whatever, you know? So it adds that last mile 
where you've got really cool custom functionality going for the client, you've had a really interesting conversation, <coughs> this last mile lets them go, oh yes, this is what I'm paying for. Because there's nothing worse, you get to halfway through the project and the client turns around and says, somebody can do this cheaper. And you're like, no, no, they can't. You've got a hundred custom features here. Did you tell the other guy that? No, they never asked. Right, well, that's why they can do it cheaper. Do you know what I mean? So again, you're able to lean back on the sales document and say, well, here's all the things you built for. You know, or again, at the end of the thing, where they turn around and say, but we thought we were getting one of these. It's not a year. I don't know why you thought you were getting one of those. We never discussed it. It's not in any of the paperwork. It's not your invoice, and it's not your work list. So how do you manage to get that? You know? So for me, as a small business owner, managing expectations was one of the biggest bugbears. Do you know what I mean? So having it all documented in a nice, rigorous way, Again, all automatic, I'm not having to do it. I've got three kids, I've got two dogs, I've got a small business, life's mental. So all the paperwork of running the business, I've fired over to WooCommerce and it's doing it really nicely. Just to wrap up, do you want to see the back end of Toolset? Because I've talked about it. Really? Yeah. Right, so you can see here in the toolbar, it's thrown in this design with Toolset. And if I come back to this mental site, and we go to tool set. Oh no, it's not pulling in too many tools. There's a lot of custom things there, but it's not pulling them all in. But to look at, let me see, a site with very personal identifiable data. So tool set is a form builder, but it's, it's, it's not like any other form builder I've looked at. I've had a quick look at Gravity Forms. I reached out to their support department. They couldn't do what I needed it to do. So I never had much more of a quick look at Gravity Forms. I know that that's a go-to for an awful lot of people. I'm a big fan of Contact Form 7 because it allows for so much customization. It's really easy to get in with. Plus, I've been working with it for nearly 10 years now, so of course it's going to be the best friend. However, there's things they cannot do. So tool set, you can see here when I pull up, this hover over menu, it's a beast, okay? So, custom post types, hands up, you know what the custom post type is? All right, custom post type is a, is a post that's slightly different to your normal blog posts or your normal posts in the page. We've given it a custom name and it's supposed to be used in a custom place. So, whenever we're creating a custom post type and tool set, we create a post type and we say the post type is HR reports. And then we create holes in that post type to put in the information. So post fields are what I call holes in the database for information to go to. So the post fields for this HR record would be name, first name, employee number, uh, national insurance number, etc. So then the next piece I would use an awful lot is views. And in views is where we can then say, okay, we've got 20 employees. I want to see those 20 employees in a list. So here's where we've been able to pull in. Each one of these guys has a big custom post type in behind that's pulling in all the information they do on the platform and every interaction they do with service users and all their supervision history and disciplinary history and all that sort of jazz. But here we've used one of those views to pull this out and spit it out to loop. And it's in the views interface that I turn around and say, yes, I want to see their name and I want to be able to link to that custom post type. I want to see their phone number. I want to see where they work. I want to see X, Y, and Z. So these are things that you can do in WordPress PHP, which is very easy, friendly PHP, using arrays, etc. But you do have to get into the code, and that's a little bit tricky. Views allows me to really quickly prototype something. So the employer, my, my, my client says, I want to see this and this. Well, nine times out of ten, he sees this and this and goes, I want to see that too. If it had been an array, it might be a bit tricky to prove that in, whereas using views, I can add it in for them on the fly, let them see it and pull it back out or add to it as it needs to be. So here you can see we've got car finder, and we've got car search, and we've got car slider. So we go into the car finder. I built this site last year, and I'm desperately trying to remember my labels. So this is where, this is pretty straightforward. You can see, if you're familiar with queries, you'll understand exactly what's going on here. So now we've got the page loaded. So this view will display post types, taxonomies, or users. We can see that we're pulling in the post types, which in this instance was cars. So here we've got a custom search. And this is saying, this is a little bit trickier, but you can see it's saying, okay, 
I want you to select all of the cars that have a make equal to, so Volvo or Volkswagen, a model V70 or Touareg or whatever, fuel times, transmissions, engine sizes, etc. Whenever we do that, Toolset automatically starts to do this sort of stuff for us. Now that looks like crazy code. Cool. That's the sort of stuff that when I look at, I shut down because it's well over my head. However, with Toolset, it adds all of this in for you. And it makes it really clear for you where to put the things that you want to put in. So you can see here the labels, etc. They're getting pulled in from the custom post type and the custom post feed. So I didn't even have to do that. It's built all of this crazy stuff already for me. However, if I needed to get in and customize it, it's there. It's not hidden away. It's right there for me. So it doesn't hide code for you. It just makes it accessible. So that's the filter editor. And then you go to the filter editor, and that decides what we're going to pull from the, the database, exactly which fields we're going to pull, what we're going to do with those fields. Are we going to combine them? Are we going to uh, mess with them, use them to order things, etc.? And then that creates this, the view template. And this view template, Loop Item and Car Finder, is a template that we built up which says exactly whenever we run this report, here's how I want the output results to look. And there we can see that. So we can see did class results. I get to do the point get code thing. I can do the code thing. So here we can see we've got the did class results. We've thrown in some styles to get it looking right. And then we've got on sale four, and you can see where I'm adding a label to the custom data that's coming in from the database. Two minutes from now. So as you can see, this for most of us developer people, we're seeing P tags. We're seeing proper HTML. If you're not a PHP person, but you are maybe a little bit experienced in theme development, Oh man, you're all over this. Get the CSS out, make this thing look beautiful. Because now all of a sudden, Toolset up above has done all the crazy stuff, all the PHP, all the finding out what the post type is, and what information from those post types want, and what do you want to do with that information. And now down here, go develop, make it pretty, make it nice for the user. And then down here again, that just shows how to blend the two of them together. So with Toolset, it's got all these amazing features. I've been using it now for coming on three years. I've developed all these really cool, quite interesting, very complex um, applications for my clients. I'm telling you now, there's 90% of that plugin I have not touched because I haven't needed to because there's so much in there. Some of it's very, very, very powerful, if it's your thing, is the layouts. So I detest page builders. I'm trying to warm up towards Gutenberg, but I do detest page builders because they invariably don't do what you see, what you get. You don't get what you see, you know? And whenever you're prototyping, a page builder can be handy if you know your way around it. Toolset has one built in whereby you can set up a template for your cars. Now, I like developing themes. I find working in a notepad an awful lot faster than any other way of interfacing with a website. But for this website, where the client is getting really picky about where went what, oh, you need to have the engine number above this, you need to do this. Doing it this way was really handy because it meant, again, sitting with him on the fly, I could just visually mess with things. So this is a point-and-click drag-and-drop editor, whereby I'll show you... Oh, it's just broken the site. Mm. I'll show you how I add in a row here, let's see. So this is the, the cars page, this is this bad boy. And if I come down here, you can see, add in a row, select how many columns we want whatever we're putting in here to take, so that would be fill width. Now it says what you want to put in here, and this is where this is different to most other page, temp, or page builders, in the fact that we can see here, it's asking us, do you want to do just normal stuff? Do you want to pull in just standard API stuff, like post content, etc.? Do you want to build a slider? Do you want to embed some groovy stuff? Do you want to do some funky layout things? Or this, this visual editor is where the real interesting stuff happens because this is where we can pull in all of that complex stuff we've built up in the database before. So this just looks like a normal WordPress editor, but we've got these funky buttons. We've got cred forms, that allows us to pull in any post or user forms that we've created. And we've got the fields and views. And this is whereby you can see it brings in standard WordPress data, it brings in user data, it brings in here, you can see our custom post type data. So this is where I'm able to say, yeah, okay, the engine size is at the very top, Alec. There you go, you're happy now, 2.9 meter, brilliant stuff. Whereas before, it was at the bottom. So this is where I can say, using that visual editor box, I grab my row, and I say, okay, this is full width row, and now I can select exactly what I want by the database to appear in that row. 
So it's very easy to quickly, very, very quickly mock up a very complex layout using all sorts of data, dynamic database driven information right in front of your client using this tool. And then if you want for speed, you can then go and hard code it. So folks, that about wraps up my talk. Um, we've really done questions. Does anybody else have any questions just before we do finish up? Well, before we do that, round of applause for me.